Hey, what's up everyone? Thank you for joining me for another video. If this is your first time watching any of my videos, I am Aisha. I hope you consider sticking around and hit that subscribe button and the bell icon so you get notified when I post future videos. If you're already a subscriber, thank you so much. I really appreciate each and every one of you for sticking around through my journey. I know I haven't been the best in posting consistently, but I am trying to work on that. So let's get right into today's video. So I've been wanting to upgrade my intercooler for a while now, but I couldn't find any intercoolers on the market that was exactly what I wanted. I basically wanted an intercooler that could fit with the bumper support bar and be dual backdoor. My main reason for wanting dual backdoor was to basically eliminate all of the piping that goes around the radiator support. If the piping shoots straight through the radiator support, it gets rid of a lot of piping. So recently I got one of those Mayhem bumper support bars and that kind of pushed me into the search of finding a new intercooler. I was gonna have to figure out how to mount the old intercooler with the Mayhem bar and I was like, why am I gonna go through all of that? Why not just get the new intercooler and figure out how to mount that one instead? I searched high and low on the internet and I finally came across a website by the name of Go Auto Works that had a intercooler that was similar measurements and horsepower rating that I wanted. The only exception was that it was only single backdoor. So I reached out to ask if it were possible to make a couple slight modifications to the intercooler to make it exactly what I wanted. I ended up talking with Greg. He told me that he would be able to do that and I was super excited to hear that. So I drew up a sketch with some measurements on the inlet and the outlet where exactly I wanted them to fall and the measurements that could fit on my car and sent it over to him to get the ordering process started and a couple weeks later Later, my inner cooler is here and I'm so excited to install it. Unfortunately, I can't weld myself, so I also have to wait for my welding guy to come to do the piping and possibly some brackets to mount it up. But now that I have the intercooler in hand, I have to figure out how I'm going to mount it up, and then I'm gonna have to cut where the inlet and the outlet are gonna come through the radiator support. So I am pretty excited about the new intercooler. I've been using this 450 horsepower intercooler and I make 593 horsepower right now. The new intercooler is rated for approximately 650 horsepower. So that should definitely be more efficient. And I'm hoping that we can do two one piece pipes, which will then be only four of the Vibrant HD Vangen <laughs> clamps. That will mean less connections and less potential for boost leaks, which I am super excited about that. One time I was at the dyno and I had a boost leak out of one of the silicone couplers and I had to take my bumper off and tighten it all back up. I'm actually really curious to find out if the new intercooler and the shorter piping with the less bends would make a difference. I actually plan on retuning when I'm finished with this and I actually have a couple other things that I will be doing on my car, which I don't fully want to reveal at this moment, but I will give you a sneak hint. It involves redoing an entire system. Which system you ask? I am not specifically going to tell you. Actually, you know what? I would like for you guys to guess. Leave in a comment down below your guess on what you think the system that I will be redoing is. After I'm finished, I'm going to retune the car and we're gonna see if I end up making more horsepower. To be really honest, I'm not interested in making any more horsepower. My goal was 550 and I ended up making 593 and I'm overly satisfied with 593. I could turn it down to 550 and I would be satisfied. I am not out here trying to break any records. I am just trying to have a reliable, street-driven, occasional go to the track car. I don't need the most horsepower and to be really honest after a certain point it becomes less fun on the street because all you really do is spin. I literally sometimes drive around on my Mickey Thompson ET streets simply because on my regular street tires I cannot get any traction whatsoever and at that point it's not fun. Like somebody pulls up to you at a stoplight and you try and take off with them, you have your street tires on, there's no traction. That's how come sometimes I ride around with my Mickeys on in case somebody pulls up to me at a stoplight, I'm ready. 
So I have a bunch of new videos that I will be working on, so make sure that you stay tuned, make sure you subscribe, make sure you hit that bell icon so you get notified first when I post these new videos. Huge shout out to Greg at Go Auto Works for making my intercooler wishes come to life. The intercooler is super quality and it just came out perfect and I'm extremely satisfied. If you guys are in the market for an intercooler, I would definitely hit him up. He also makes other products to do with turbo like piping and stuff like that. So make sure you check out his website at GoAutoWorks.com. So right now I'm kind of just testing out to see where I'm gonna have to cut holes some people may think that it requires a lot of modification to put a dual back door in a cooler the only thing that i can see where you would need a lot of modification is if you're running a regular radiator because the regular radiator how it's gonna sit you're gonna have to cut out wide but with a tuck radiator there's space in between here where it's barely any cutting for it to come through and this is kind of where it's lining up right now and you can almost see the entire part of the outlet there so i basically marked out with a sharpie three inches because the inner cooler inlet and outlet are two and a half inches so that's basically to give it a little extra room around the edges so it doesn't touch the same for that side This is my new favorite tool. So I made these makeshift brackets out of some generic brackets from Home Depot. I'm still waiting for my welding guy to come and I just needed something to hold up the intercooler for now so that I can make sure that the inlet and the outlet are hitting in the right spots. And this is how it's looking so far. This is how this part is looking right now. I still have to like clean this up a little bit and I still have to cut a little piece off of here. And that's what the other side is looking like. I still have to cut more off of here too. I just didn't want to cut too much and then regret it. <laughs> so just trying to take my time and cut a little bit at a time, but it's looking pretty good. The piping too actually isn't going to be that difficult because this pipe already goes here. So all it has to do is basically just make a piece from here and go right there. This one on the other side, um, the piping came here and then, you know, went around. But now it's got to go here. So I don't know, maybe come somewhere along here and then start to curve up and then go right there. I'm super excited, I can't wait until it's done because then I won't have any more of this piping going around there. And then this is the other piece that went around this way that would sit like that. So now I will have no piping coming around the edges and it'll be nice and clean and just right there. Just waiting for my welding guy to come and do the piping for me.
it's on there's the one side and there's that side it looks a little bit like booboo -boo right now because it was painted and so it's all bubbly and so i have to strip the paint off and i'm thinking about getting the piping powder coated this time last time i had just painted it but it doesn't last as long as powder coating once i get it powder coated it'll look all nice and powder coat the little brackets i'm so excited it's all finished fits through there with no issue. Like there's so much clearance. I actually cut too much. <laughs> that hole could have been smaller. This hole could have been smaller too. <laughs> but that's okay though. At least it's not gonna be rubbing. As for the clamps, <laughs> I had polished clamps before and like that one up there. When I went to go purchase the new clamps or the new full assembly, they didn't have any polished, so I had to buy the black. So now I'm even debating whether maybe I should change all of them to black. Once they become available, just purchase the clamp itself because you can purchase the clamp separately. You don't have to buy the whole assembly. That one's black, that one's black. And I already have this one in polished and I already have that one in polished. So it's either buy this one and this one in black to match those two or buy those two in polish to match these two <laughs> you guys tell me in a comment down below what you think this is it two short pieces of piping time to aircraft i'm gonna use aircraft paint remover to remove the paint so that i can take them to get powder coated Huge shout out to Tariq at Race Genetic Fabrications for coming through to do the piping and the little brackets for me. I really appreciate you coming to my house to do everything. It made it so much easier that I could have had everything on the car torn apart. If you guys are looking for someone to do any fabrication work for you, make sure you check him out. He's on Instagram. He's based in Orlando, but I know he can be somewhat mobile. I'm not sure how far he's willing to travel. You'll have to hit him up and ask him that. Thank you guys for watching this video. I really hope that it was helpful. Maybe it might be helpful to anyone out there who was trying to figure out if dual back door would work for their setup. If you have any questions that I didn't answer throughout this video, make sure you leave that in a comment down below and I will get back to you with an answer. And I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.